but we start with Manchester United against Liverpool. Let's start by talking about Manchester United, about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in, mm. in particular. He knows what this game means to Manchester United fans. How much does it mean to him and, and his Manchester United future? I think it's huge. I think he's done incredibly well. I think that what he has done is brought a smile back to the players' faces. He's got the fans on side. He's got his best players playing in their best positions. And, I mean, Dan was saying before, it's, it's an incredible job that he's done. But you can see he's come in and he's, he's not done the things that are easy. He, 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 he's solved he solved what he thought he saw as a problem, but he's got players playing with confidence. You know, people talk about Paul Pogba and how he's performing. I think one of the biggest turnarounds has been Lindelof. I think under Mourinho at times, he looked as though he was really nervous. He didn't want to put a foot wrong. Now, he looks like the defender that United thought they were buying. And that's because the confidence is going through the squad and everybody has been affected in a positive way. And they actually, they actually go into this game against Liverpool where they can actually sit back a little bit as in terms of the onus is 100% on Liverpool. Do you think they will? I think so, yeah, because I think if you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Liverpool, I think you open yourself up to do that. I think if you do that, then in my opinion, Liverpool are one of the best counter-attacking teams in Europe. They will love that. I think United, what they do now, they can sit off. I think, obviously, when they went to Liverpool, it was really bad. The pos everyone talk talked about the possession. Against Chelsea in the FA Cup, they had less possession than they did at Liverpool. <laughs> it's just that they're moving up the pitch better together, so nobody was isolated. So I think they're in a position to be able to do that because the onus is on Liverpool. Do you think that? Do you think that they're going to sit back a little bit more than we've seen maybe in the, in the past? Well, I think, firstly, it's worth saying that I think Solskjaer's proven himself tactically as well. Yeah. We were talking earlier, weren't we? Yeah. You know, he switched to the diamond a couple of times, the way they played at Tottenham, surprised Tottenham to get them in the lead against Chelsea the other night, the way they set up. <clears throat> I do think Pogba benefited initially from the Herrera-Matic yeah. legs behind him and the discipline, they, you know, the platform they gave him to go and play. Um, I don't remember in my years going to Old Trafford United ever sitting back. <laughs> um, but I do understand Dan's point. It, it, it seems silly to go after Liverpool with the pace they've got on the counter because they will enjoy that. I just think maybe there's a... For Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, there's, there's, there's kind of an obligation for him to let them go out and have a go because of what's happened under Mourinho. Um, can, he, can he put the reins on? You know, I, I say put the reins on. They'd still attack even if they sit back. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Choose, choose yes, when to go. Yeah. But the momentum... The, the other thing that this game brings, which is very unusual because it's always been the other way, United are trying to stop Liverpool winning the league. I mean, when my time there, we used to go there, knowing they were the best, yeah. and try and stop them. And, and it's, it's turned, hasn't it? You know, can United supporters watch their side, go and beat Liverpool, and, and give City their name? Well, they want City mm. to win it, as we've spoken about. Well, I mean, so that that's why I... Th actively yeah. want City to win it, but, you know... Yeah, yeah. But, I, but I, I think... Lesser two evils. Yeah, it is yeah. the lesser yes. two evils, but I, I think as a group of players, you've just come... By the way, great reaction, that result at Chelsea after PSG. Because mm. there was a lot of question marks after PSG dominated them, really. Mm. Can they respond? Good Chelsea side, beat them, played well. Um, so it's going to be a fascinating game, and, and you know, we, we've been talking about all the different permutations of tactics. Um, we don't really know what any of them are going to do, but one, one thing that is for sure, <clears throat> the creativity on that pitch, the confidence, the skill... You know, I think there's going to be goals. I, th I think as well, when you look at United, I think if you go back to Van Gaal and you look at, you look at Mourinho, the last two managers, I think the difference between them two and Solskjaer now is the fact of they seem to be the boss, it's my way or it's no way. Whereas you look now, it looks as though it's more of a collective. Yeah. You've got Solskjaer, you've got Mike Phelan. So you've got Solskjaer who's been there, done it as a player. You've got Mike Phelan who's been there, done it as an assistant manager, winning mm. the Champions League under Sir Alex Ferguson. And you've got Michael Carrick who's been there and done it as a player. Collectively, you can see them all communicating. So it's not, right, this is how we're doing it. It looks as though between the three of them, they said, right, OK, we can take care of this together. And it's, it's as though three minds have come together. And I think that shows on the pitch then. I believe that the players probably have have an opinion, they're allowed to have an opinion in the dressing room. I don't think that that was necessarily the case before. Mm. And I think that works really well for the players because they can say, OK, well, this is what we would prefer to do. Obviously, at the end of the day, it's the manager's decision. But I just think they've been able to express themselves off the pitch and as well as on the pitch now. And, and everybody is playing with a smile on the face and look full of confidence. I just wonder, having, you know, mentioning the, the games that, that Danny did, the PSG game, mm. the game against Chelsea, which was the, the reaction to that. Although yeah. Chelsea not in a, in a great place at, <clears throat> at the moment. 
Then you've got this game against Liverpool week on Wednesday. You've got the return leg in, in Paris in the Champions League. They were the games, and this was the, the group of fixtures that we looked at as possibly defining mm. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's Manchester United future. He, he passed the test that he's, he'd met up yeah. to that point. PSG was a, a rare blip for him and, and has set only things blip. up going. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And has set it up to, to go away and, yeah. to, to Paris and with the, the injuries at, yeah. at half time, which meant he had to change things around. So when we, we, we sort of set the, this group of fixtures up, it was this, this could make the difference yes. to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Will that be on his mind? And, and is, that a gen, is that something you think the, the Manchester United hierarchy will be looking at in, in terms of whether or not he can take this job further? I, I'm not too sure, because I think when you look at the, the PSG game, which has been their one real blip, OK, they drew with Burnley, but I think at times you've got to take a step back because there, there was such a clamour for Solskjaer before the PSG job. And then all of a sudden, after they get beat by PSG, he's gone the other way, oh no, he shouldn't get the job. Let's look at the cold hard facts. PSG, okay, they're out without Cavani, uh, without Neymar, and they're, an, they're a fantastic team. United then lost two of their best players at half time when it was nil nil. So take a little step back instead of saying, oh, well, he's failed the test. You know, he had a few bumps in the road in that mm. game. And I think what he's done, yes, it's the results have been outstanding, but He's got United back to being United. That is the biggest thing for me. When he first got the job, I remember we sat on here and we spoke about it. I said it was more important what happened off the pitch than what happened on the pitches in terms of behind the scenes because I didn't believe for one minute that they could, you know, get back this 11-point gap to, to fourth place. I still believe that there needs to be a director of football in place because you can't have a manager, whoever it may be, having to deal with um, Ed Woodward and, and, and a basis like that because everyone talks about Sir Alex Ferguson leaving. It was, it was a massive body blow to the club, but... What people don't talk enough about is David Gill left at the same time as well, and he's not been replaced. So that's something that needs to be put in place regardless of who comes in charge. But I think at the moment, with Solskjaer, the way he's going about things, the way he knows the club, the way the players are reacting to him, I think, you know, he's put himself in a fantastic position to get the job. They are, though, under Ed Woodward, signing up a lot of the young players. The latest who's reported to be signing a, a long-term contract is Marcus Rashford. Yeah. Reports that he's going to be signing a, a six-year contract at, at Manchester United. Can you understand why they're desperate yeah, to keep hold of, of him? Of, of course, because I think what they want to do, I think there's two things. They want to make sure the new manager, whoever it is that comes in, whether it's Sosa or someone else, that they have players, their top players, signed down to contracts. But it's also the club on a... It, it's, it's very wise business, isn't it? Because the last thing you want is your top players, their contracts starting to run down. So as well as it is on the football pitch, it's also the business side of things. So, you know, so they're taking care of both things. And... Rashford, he's been, he, he looks incredible under uh, Solskjaer. He's playing in his preferred position. And I think it, it's there for everybody to see the way that he's going about things. Not just his goals, but his assists. He's just an all-round player that he can be whatever he wants to be now. I think he could actually... <clears throat> There's a dilemma for United in the summer. I think they still need a carrot replacement, like a Verratti. Yeah. I think that, that's the most important. But, you know, with the Lukaku situation, who's used to being a number one striker everywhere he's been for the last few years, he's the main man. He's now... I know he started when Ollie came in, he was injured, wasn't he? And Rashford played the central role and he's banging in the goals. Is Rashford ready and right? Is it the right time for him to be the United number nine? The one that plays in all the big games week in, week out? Or does he remain second striker when Lukaku's not quite at it or injured and then fill in on the right and the left like he can because he's so gifted, as you say? I personally think he's showing at the moment... And to be honest, let, let's not forget our young years. I mean, he's, there's only Ryan Giggs in all the years mm. who got to 100 games quicker than Rashford. Now, that in itself, when you think of the players that have come through United, yeah. incredible. Unbelievable. And all these managers can't be wrong and keep playing him. So, is he ready? I think he's ready. Because, I'll ask you this, if you go out and say Lukaku doesn't want to be number two and, or you want to replace Lukaku because he's not quite up to Aguero or whatever you want to try and Salah, who do you get? Who's, who's better than Rashford. Now, you have to get a ready-made. There's not many out there, and it's going to cost you £100 million. I think, I think it would be a huge step back now if Rashford had to, stay, had to take a backward step himself because of yeah. what he's done. Because of what he's done, the, 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 the occasions that he's done it on, what he's doing now on the social... I just wonder... Do you think Lukaku will stay? Personally, myself, I don't. If Solskjaer, if Solskjaer <clears throat> does get the job, I don't see it because no. we've already seen he wants that flexible front three. Lukaku mm. is a fantastic centre forward, but he's a centre forward. Yeah. We look at Rashford when he <coughs> interchange with Lingard and interchange with Martial, and I think that's why when you when you look at it and you think, right, okay, is he the one that can be Manchester United's number nine? I don't think there's a necessity to have that one number nine because the way that they can play, we've seen it with a lot of centre forwards that can play 
off the right or off the left, but but narrow. We've even seen Solskjaer play the diamond playing two up front. Yeah. So I think he's got he's got that in reserve as in terms of Rashford. He's, he's a player that can play in a number of different ways, not just as the out and out centre forward that wants to stretch the game. But mm. Lukaku, I would be very surprised if he didn't go in the summer myself personally. I'm sure there'll be takers, by the way, because yeah, he oh, yeah. he's a great player. player. He's a super player. Rashford at the weekend, though? 100%. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's scored a couple against Liverpool before, hasn't he? Um, <laughs> he? He's a threat because of his pace and his confidence. Although, he's... actually, Lukaku was a player who caused a lot of yeah. trouble for the, for the defenders with, with both the Rashford's goal left. Well, I, I, think for, I think for the game at the weekend, it, it's not so much personnel, it's more tactical. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, United are, are blessed. I know they've got a couple of injuries, but... You know, to be able to bring Sanchez and Matter on yeah. for Martial and uh, Lingard, you know, I mean, not many clubs have that. They've, they're, their front players are tremendous. It's, 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 it's how they set up, you know, A, to stop Liverpool mm. and B, to cause Liverpool problems. Um, because w one thing you've got to remember as well, I mean, with Van Dijk back, you know, you're not going to outrun him. No. You've got to be clever. I mean, there, there's, there's, there's so many different variables. But I, I, I personally think that for Liverpool at the weekend, it's, it's a blessing that United are doing so well. I mean, of course, you'd rather have them mm. in not terms playing of, well. Not playing well. I mean, really yeah. bad. But yeah. but they're doing so well, and my logic is that because they're doing so well, the confidence is flowing. They're going to come for you. Mm. And as you said before, I think if they come for Liverpool, that'll suit Liverpool. The problem for for Liverpool though is that the players that are coming for them are oh, good playing players. so yeah. well at the moment. Yeah. And like you said, you talked about Pogba earlier. And the fact that he think since the, the turn of the year he's been involved in more goals than any other player in any of the top European leagues, and they've just it's like they've unlocked him, and it. Well, I, I don't think anybody. I personally never doubted his ability. I, I think he's a wonderful footballer. He's, he's technically very good. He's strong. He's quick. Um, you know, he can put his foot in when he needs to. I mean, those numbers are fantastic. I mean, the, the only question mark there is, you know, what was his attitude like under Mourinho? I, I, I watched a lot of United, did a lot of their games earlier in the season, and I, and I felt that he'd, maybe subconsciously, he was, his body language wasn't great, he wasn't getting about the pitch like he is now. And I don't think it was him walking onto the pitch going, I'm not going to try. I think he was frustrated at the formation, frustrated at his options, and he started trying to hit wonder balls all over the place. Now he's playing in a team that's got runners. You were talking earlier about mm. the runners, which is a midfielder that gives you options. Mm. You know, he, he's, there's variation in the play. He's playing the left of a diamond. He's playing ahead of a two. He's getting himself in the box. At times I watched him under Mourinho, he was restricted. And he, you could see his frustration. You know when you, 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 know when you see players, sometimes oh, you come yeah. up against them and they're overthinking their position. I mean, I think it was Tottenham game, wasn't it, as well? Where, was it when he got dragged off games? Like, yeah, I mean, he's sitting on the bench some yeah. games. One of the best midfielders in the world. Yeah. That can't be right. And now, I mean, the way he is now, sorry, Dan, he, I, right. I've got to say, I, I, I think the last few games, he's, he's, he's becoming a leader. Yeah. I, and that's crucial for United. I think, I think there's two things. I think... When he first came back to United, I think world record fee, it was, right, he's going to boss the midfield. Mm. He didn't have to boss the midfield at Juventus. He had Pirlo and he had Vidal. So he was being asked to come back to a club that was in a huge transition, didn't know what direction they were going in with a lot of players, uh, a lot of mismatches in terms of the midfield there. And he was told, right, you get a grip of the midfield. When Danny was playing, when, when I was playing to a certain extent myself, I think there could be, to a certain degree, box-to-box -box midfielders. I don't think there can be now. I think you have a defensive midfielder or a attack-minded midfielder. He's an attack-minded midfielder. Mourinho was asking him to play in a two as a defensive side of things, but get forward and get back. Not possible in today's game, in my opinion, if you want him to assist and score goals. Now, we fast-forward it to now. Let's not forget, Solskjaer knew Pogba growing up. Pogba was previously at the club. Solskjaer was a coach there. You know, he will have managed him. He will have known what he was all about, the type of player that he is. So what he will have done, I guarantee, when he first came back to the club, he probably would have pulled Pogba and said, I'm going to build this team around you. Mm. I'm going to get you back and show everybody that you are this world-class midfielder that everybody thinks you've got inside you and I'm going to get it out of you. And in order for me to do that, I'm going to build a team around you, but I want one thing from you. I want trust from you. And he's given him that, and that's exactly what's happened. Is he then the player that, that Manchester United bought? Yes, 100%. But now he's being played... A, he's being played in a position that is his best, and the team has been built around him. If you're going to spend all that money on a player, you build a team around him, you build a team around your best players, and that's exactly what they've done. In that the, top bracket? Oh, yeah. Mm. He's a super, super player. I mean, the, the, the only thing he lets... I mean, you could argue a bit unlucky with the sending off, but for me, that's killed United <clears> in the second <throat> leg. Because he's the one player 
like you saw in the Chelsea game, that can produce those moments of magic. Yeah. And they've got others, of course, you know, but he, at the moment, is the one that you'd want and they're not going to have him. But he's going to play a major role. It's going to be interesting with Klopp to see how he sets up, whether it's more to stop United. We saw at City, he went with his trusted three, Wijnaldum, Milner, Henderson. You know, we were talking earlier that a lot of their best games are when they've been a bit more adventurous and only had two holders yeah. and played three with Salah at the top and Firmino in behind. And I'm surprised recently that he hasn't gone back to that. And it's gonna, we, we don't know what he's going to do. I think you think he's going to go more attacking, don't you? I think he'll go 4-2-3-1 because I think if he plays 4-3-3, which is the counter-attacking, is that I don't think there's going to be space behind this Man United defence. I think the one thing is, is that they are playing, you know, at times as, as little possession. The game against Chelsea was less possession than they ever had mm. under Mourinho, but the units are moving forwards and backwards together. So Rashford was never isolated. If the defence dropped back, he dropped mm. back, allowed the opposition onto him, then there was space in behind. I think what gives United the upper hand to a certain extent in this game is that United know that Liverpool, in my opinion, I believe Liverpool have to win this game. I don't think they can draw this game. Whereas from United's perspective, you know, they could go, OK, well, a draw would be fine for us because we're in a position which people didn't expect us. A, a win would be great. Liverpool need to win this game. So therefore, I think United will think to themselves, Liverpool have got to come out and attack us. So can we, can we make them really vulnerable? Can we set traps for them and make them their most vulnerable when they're attacking themselves? The thing is, actually, Liverpool can draw the game and still be all right. Yeah. You know, if Liverpool draw at United and win every again and win the league... So will, will that be in Klopp's head? I don't think it will because I very rarely see a Liverpool team that doesn't set up to try and win. Mm. The only time I saw it was at City. I thought they were lit, although they had the chance, I think it was Mane, wasn't it, early in the City game, if you remember. They did set up, I thought, a little bit negatively. Um, but... If you're going to win the league, I suppose, you've got to go all track but, and get a result, haven't you? I mean, it's, it's, I, I think it's amazing. And the other fascinating bit, which is probably for another day, but when... Because City got to go there as well. Mm. Yeah. Well, is, is it about, for, for Klopp, is it less... Not less about the way he sets up, but more about the players that he trusts to perform in a game of, of this magnitude? Because you, you'd see the ones that he used throughout last season that he picked in all the, the big games. There are new players who who've come in this season, who the likes of, of Keita and Fabinho, who started yeah. to show signs of why they were bought, but have they shown enough of it to be trusted in a, in a game like this? I think they have. I mean, it's, it's a hard one to pick the right person because Fabinho showed, Fabinho showed that he can play that role now. Mm. He's quite progressive with his passing, but if you look at Henderson's performance against Munich, yeah. fantastic mm. in the week. You know, there's a, he could play on both. Um, I think Keita might miss out. I think he might put Milner in, mm. you know, that, that reliability. I think it's more about what he does ahead, which is what we were saying. You know, Salah scores goals when he plays on the right or centrally. I think sometimes if Salah plays on the right, and I think it'd be up against Shaw, who loves to get yeah. forward, he's not particularly good going that way. And I know sometimes Klopp leaves them high on purpose, but if you were to play Mane on the right, you're going to get more going back and play Salah. And Firmino drops in and helps the midfield. That, that's what I would do. But he hasn't been doing it recently. I think one of the things as well I'm not buying into, I don't think the pressure's getting to them. I don't no. think they're getting stressed about it. I think you have to take a step back and just look. Lovren's been injured. Gomez has been injured. Trent Alexander-Arnold's been injured. Other players have had to be shifted around. And that's why they've suffered, because Liverpool's defence this season has been incredible. It's been that huge backbone that they've been able to build on. Now, because of injuries, we've seen them take a lead against Leicester, we've seen them take the lead against West Ham. You think to yourself, strong enough then to keep that, to keep that clean sheet. But when you lose some of your key players at the back, you become more vulnerable. So I think it's more to do with that rather than, rather than stress, rather than the nerves setting mm. in. I don't think it's anything like that at all. Whatever the reasons are for that, that dip in, mm. in form, and trying to keep the pace up of, of how they yeah. played in the first half of the season was always going to be very difficult. But, but that sort of um, drop-off in, in results, for whatever reason, is that another reason yeah. why it's important that they, they get a win well, against Manchester yeah, United? Yeah, because all of a sudden, if they don't get a win, then it becomes they've won three of the last seven. And like I say, then it may become a mental thing. It may become something that the nerve starts kicking. But at the moment, I don't think it's that. I just think it's the fact of they've had injuries. I look at Manchester City and that's what gives them the upper hand. There's only, in my opinion, the goalkeeper Edison and Fernandinho that are replaceable. They lost De Bruyne for a certain amount of time. They've lost David Silva Long at times. Time. Aguero's been out. They can deal with that. Whereas, whereas at Liverpool, there's a few players you think if they lose them, you know, then it does have a major problem, as we've seen on the defensive side of things, which hasn't been as strong as what it was when they had such a solid back four. At this stage, as a player, would you be getting nervous? 
I would. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? We, it, it is a different mentality. I, I do think that because then we were chasing and we were always in awe of them a little bit and trying to, and they were winning everything, there was a steely determination there and it was a bit of a free hit. Um, probably why we did well there because I think that, you know, you, everyone expected us to go there and lose most of the time because of how well they were playing generally. Whereas now Liverpool, the pressure is on because they've lost one game all season. I don't think many Liverpool fans think they're going to go and lose to United, even though United have wonderful players and they're playing at home in front of, what, 70, 60, 70,000 people. So I, I think that players will be, not getting nervous, I think they'll be excited, but in a different way because of the league title race, the pressure. We weren't, we weren't going there to try and win a title. We were trying to go in there and stop them. It's a different mentality. As, as a player, being involved in the games, because you obviously played in a lot of them, when you went to Old Trafford, could you sense that it was a completely different atmosphere than any other game? Yeah. That season. It's huge, isn't it? It's, it's... Well, the story I always tell is I, I, I probably scored one of my best ever goals to win yeah. the Merseyside derby. Yeah. And I've, I've been lucky enough to travel over the world where you meet Liverpool fans everywhere and all they ever talk about is the goals I've got against United. Yeah. No one's ever mentioned... <laughs> the, no, they haven't. <laughs> tell you them, bring you, it up? You, no. <laughs> you, you don't get a chance. Yeah? You want to. You can't if you've got that one. But no one ever brings it up. And... and it's not disrespect to Everton, it's, it's based on success. It's based on domination, Liverpool, then United, well, it was United, then Liverpool, yeah. then United, you know, and this game means everything. It, it's, it's, it, it's, if you're a local lad as well, as you know, <clears throat> it's the one you look out for. And I think some of the foreign lads get it eventually. They don't initially because you're not brought up in that environment, but... I mean, it's pretty big around the world as well. It is around yeah. the world, yeah. I mean, some of the viewing figures were huge, but we used to, you know, we, we, we were always... I think one of the most impressive things about the Liverpool side, considering they play a high tempo and they do press them, is their discipline. You know, they don't get many players sent off. You know, they're not stupid. They don't let that... The, the platform clock gives them to go and press sometimes and play with that tenacity. They don't generally do it stupidly. Mm. You know, they don't let the occasion get the better of them. They're very disciplined with their work, and that's credit to Klopp. And I, I don't see that being a problem at the weekend either. So, what's the score going to be? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I don't think no. Liverpool lose. OK. I really don't. And, and if any, if it was going to... Liverpool could edge you, but a draw... I don't think a draw's the end of the world. Cos City, City will go there and have problems. Mm, I'm going to go for United win. You Thought got you might. Right. You got him. <laughs> you got him.